So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out before us. We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So consider carefully how Jesus faced such intense opposition from sinners who oppose their own souls, so that you won't become worn down and keep in under life's pressures. After all, you have not yet reached the point of sweating blood in your opposition to sin. And have you forgotten his encouraging words spoken to you as his children? He said, My child, don't underestimate the value of the discipline and, and training of the Lord God, or get depressed when he has to connect you. For the Lord's training of your life is the evidence of his faithful love, and when he draws you to himself, it proves you are his delightful child. Amen. May God add a blessing to our hearing in this word. Amen. Thank you. Please rise if you prefer and are able. <laughs>
Thank you, Holly and Tim, for leading us in worship and song. Um, these hymns I hadn't heard in a long time, and I thank God for you both doing that for us. Those who are able, if you may like, you may stand for the reading of the gospel lesson according to Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 16 through 19, and 25 through 30 from the New Living Translation. Let us hear the word of the Lord. To what can I compare this generation? It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We played wedding songs and you didn't dance. So we played funeral songs and you didn't mourn. For John didn't spend his time eating and drinking and you say he possessed by a demon. The son of man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by its results. Verse 25. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me no one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heaven burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. God's word may be sanctified in your souls. And let us say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Well, we've been on this discipleship journey. We started back in August, September, learning about relationships and how our relationship must grow with God and with Jesus and with God through Jesus. And when we get to Jesus and have a hankering of what Jesus wants from us, then God stopped being deity to us and be Father. And then we think we got it. But no, it's not. We haven't gotten it yet. Now, it, it, that's just the beginning. That's not the end. It's the beginning. As we survey what it means to be called in the body of Christ, we can concur that it's more than just worshiping God. It's more than just coming on Sunday mornings or Wednesday or Thursday. It is about a commitment in learning of Jesus and doing as he did. Yes. <laughs> Being a member of the body of Christ is about commitment to learn. As Reverend Dr. Austin said about praying for the denomination, getting back to our heritage, that was the heritage of John Wesley. John Wesley went so that people could learn. Do you know the school, schools as we know it now was birthed through John Wesley, the universities and colleges was birthed through John Wesley because John Wesley wrote pamphlets to give to the common people so that they may learn the gospel, so that they may learn God's word. Do you know that's where Sunday school started? That was a John Wesley thing. People needed to what? So you say that one with me. Learn. And when we learn, we what? Grow. Jesus didn't call or commission those that followed him to build a church. Can I go back into the scriptures? The word church or ecclesia comes when Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? Everybody said, 
say with you and Elijah. They came up with everything. But Peter had a revelation and said, you are the Christ, the Christos. Woo. And Jesus comes back and say, I, I just, can you imagine Jesus going like this? <laughs> By George, I thank you, God. Because flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. And upon this revelation, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevent. Oh, uh, what? Are you really true, Pastor? Yeah. It, it's not on us to build a church. It's us to have a revelation of what it means to be the church. Um. Jesus calls and commissioned those who would hear his voice to go and make learners, disciples of his way, not our way. I think that's where we've gotten lost in being the United Methodist Church, lost of Wesleyan way, is that we try to make the church what we want it to be, and not what Christ called it to be as a revelation of who he is. Jesus commissions us in Matthew and Mark. Go ye therefore and make, and that's King James, disciples. What's the word make mean? To mold, to form. But wait a minute. I thought we were already people, already formed. We are. But not in the image of Christ. Go and form and make and, and lead them to the path of God, into the kingdom, the reign of God. This morning, we are still grappling with this call of fulfilling the Great Commission. It's not just university church, it's every congregation that's not growing. Should I say that again? It's not just us. It's not just our denomination. Because we are called to fulfill the great commission. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, Jesus has finished instructing the 12 disciples on the persecution they would endure from their family and friends because of their choice to answer the call to follow him. For the disciples to learn of Jesus, they traveled with him throughout Galilee as he taught and preached about the kingdom of God. During this journey, John the Baptist's disciples come to John is in prison and ask a pivotal question. Are you the one or should we look for another? Instead of Jesus stating the obvious, of his bloodline, Jesus gives John's disciples a commission to go and report back to John the miracles, signs, and wonders that they had placed, that had taken place as Jesus journeyed through the region. He said, tell them the blind, has, the blind see, the lame walk. He tells them to tell what you hear and see. That's what the 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 purpose of people who call themselves Christian is to go and tell what you hear and see of the miracles, signs, and wonders that God is doing through Jesus Christ in your life. This is the backdrop for our text this morning. Our text picks up at that point where Jesus is now focusing on the attitude of the generation that were hearing the call that that John the Baptist gave and the call Jesus was given and no matter what he or John said, the people took opposition. They refused to learn and grow. Let us pray. Oh, hear our call, oh God, as we call out to you. Teach us today, oh Lord, to hear, follow, and grow. We come up against the enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy all that we learn so that we may not grow in the body of Christ, but remain stagnant without power or authority. Teach us, O oh God. This we pray. Amen. Today, 
Many of you already know this. The path of the disciple is not an easy one. There's a cost. And as we've been hearing these past Sundays, it's hard. Yeah. And how do we grow in hard times? But you heard last Sunday. There is a weight to this call to be a disciple of Jesus of Christ. Jesus challenged then and now the cynical and skeptical views that people have as they hear the gospel message because of our attitude I wanted to live in the bubble of our secure, comfortable, and self-centered lives. We as human beings too often justify our inconsistencies of living the gospel message because listening to God may require us to change our way of thinking. Paul says, Romans 12, change your mind. Be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is the, 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 the crust of the United Methodist um, motto. We are to make disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. And, and we think sometimes, Jim, we think transforming the world is going out there with hands and feet. And most of the time, we got to start with the mind of people. That's why the old proverb says, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man a fish, and he lives for a lifetime. We have to change our way of thinking, the way we interact and live. In the prayer of our text this morning that Jesus prayed, he mentions two kinds of people. The wise, arrogant in their own knowledge, and the little children, those that were humble and open to receive the truth of God's word and message. Jesus directs that those who are humble knew him and knew the Father. To know did not imply a knowledge of facts, because anybody can, Jesus, devil knew God. The devil knows God. It's not about facts. How many people studied religion in, in university or in school? You, you, we know the facts. But Jesus directs us that those who have an intimate relationship with Jesus also has an intimate relationship with God, the parent. God, the deity, is known and revealed as God the Father through our faith in Jesus as God the Son. Jesus reveals up to us the parent and the truth that comes with being an intimate relationship with them. This is the call of the disciple. The more we learn of Jesus, the more we learn of God. And the more we learn of God, the more that we can make an impact in society. And the more we learn, the more our souls are changed. I deceit eyes to look like Those who identify themselves as Christians are called to grow and mature in the things of God and the kingdom. Remember, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him or her. Nor can he, can he or she know them because they are spiritually deserved. You see, it's not just about fact in the book, but it's about having revelation. And the only way you get revelation is through the Spirit through the Holy Spirit. It's through that revelation we not only grow spiritually, but then we grow emotionally. And then when we grow emotionally, we, we are ready to reach out and help others to be transformed. Therefore, to mature in God, we must follow Jesus and learn from him. Mm -hmm. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews states in Hebrews 12, 2, we look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us who, and who leads us forward to faith perfection. It's about faith. The path of the discipleship is about faith to you want to learn to grow. The pathway of discipleship is hard. 
and filled with opposition, which can discourage even the Trump, the strongest person. Anybody been discouraged other than me? Yes. Even the strongest one of us still can survive. But we can survive under the heavy, heavy weight. You see, this path of discipleship is to move us away from society's norms. And it places us in a position where we must grow in our faith by allowing our souls, our distinct eyes, to be transformed. Because that weight is too heavy for us to bear. We are not made to bear this weight. This is our path. This is our call. I'm a Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars Marvel DC. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm one of those fans. And the new Star, in the Star Wars, the newest one they have is the Mandalorian. Probably the pre pre restful of all the other Star Wars. But the Mandalorian is a disciple of the way. You have to watch that thing. See, people don't look at it spiritually or Christian. I'm like, okay, somebody know Christian God, because they, 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 they are they are disciples of the way. They don't know, they haven't seen who started it. The person who started went on a go and they take an oath. And with the Mandalorian, they have to put on the armor. Anybody ever heard of the armor of God? They have to put on this armor, but they can't take it off. And if they take the helmet off and someone sees their face, then they have to go back all over again to be washed again. Y'all better go watch that thing in the life of Jesus. And be washed again in the, in the springs of life. You know, I get all caught up with that because I'm seeing Jesus all in this thing. <laughs> and then they have to come back. Uh oh. Back to his duck in this thing. Then they have to come back and show themselves to those that are part of the group or, or the way that they have washed in the springs of life. And then they put their helmets back on and they go and they do. And they said, this is our path. This is the way. This is our path. This is the way. This is our call. Following this path can wear a person down if we are striving to do it in our own strength and on our own terms. When, as we conclude, when Jesus called to each of us, or when Jesus called to the 12 apostles, he stated to them, follow me. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to follow someone or something? To follow means to go or come after, to keep to the course of, to watch or observe closely or to act in accordance with, obey. The writer of Hebrews states that if we look to all those who follow Jesus, those who are on the pathway, they show through their life, by their faith, the truth of God's faithfulness, that we shouldn't lose heart and grow weary. Even through the rejection and persecution we have not gone through to the point of shedding our own blood to be paid right with God. Jesus paid that price. Mm -hmm. Jesus gives us a prescription as you count the cost of learning and growing in him. Mm -hmm. To come to him and take on his rest. Shake off the burden of you got to do it yourself. You have to do it alone. Jesus tells us to be yoked with him and not try to live and go through this path by ourselves. See, a yoke, for those of us who are farm people, is a heavy wooden harness that fits over the shoulders of an animal, whether it be an ox. In my house, it was a mule. For some people, it was horses. And it's attached to a piece of equipment that is like a wire. And it come back in, it's got a cylinder in the middle, and it comes and you put the reins on it, and the reins are hooked to the big, thick reins on the yoke, 
And then the person who's steering can steer. But you know what? When you have one oxen, they can pull so many tons. But people thought they would only double the tons when you put two oxen. But what they found out, the force that comes from two not only doubles, it quadruples the force of one. So can you imagine if we stop trying to do it ourselves and put on the yoke? That what God has taught us to do now becomes easy because we're not doing the pulling. Jesus tells us to connect ourselves to him and learn from his perspective as we travel this path of discipleship while being led to multiply the kingdom of God. Yes, he said to multiply the kingdom. John Wesley understood that, to multiply the kingdom. As we yoke ourselves with Jesus and learn of him, our attitude changes. From looking at being a disciple or a Christian as a chore or toll, toll, but as purpose as truly being in the hands and feet of Christ to go into the fields of society and harvest those who are being called to learn and grow because our hearts are focused on the joy of knowing him and wanting others to share in that joy. That what God calls us to do, we get happy to do because it's life. Yes, we got the toy and wipe our brow, but we happy in doing it because we happy to do it. It's not heavy burden, but it's light and easy. Jesus offers rest as we make the ultimate commitment to follow him and be the catalyst of change for others. Again, I talk about Star Wars, the man and woman. They state when everything is over and the leader says something, this is what we have to do, they cross their heart and say, this is the way. I can't draw by saying that. Because this is the way of the disciple of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is the way that God calls us to learn, to grow, and to multiply. Receive this word as we prepare to come to the table. As we prepare to come and recommit ourselves every Sunday at this table. That we come in the joy in knowing that Christ is with us. That we are joy in knowing that the rivers of living water is there for us. And that we can refresh ourselves in knowing that when we partake of the bread and of the cup, that we partake of Jesus and being yoked with him. So as we look at the table, that's part of our yoke. This is the way. So I invite you to come to the table of grace. Everyone. Come, all who thirst for God. All are welcome here. Come, all who hunger for love. All are welcome here. Come to the table of grace. Here God, God nourishes our soul. Let us pray our prayer of confession. God, God justice, justice and mercy. We, we know that we have fallen silent when we should have spoken up. We have ignored the cries of the innocent and joined the crowds and calls of judgment. We have mistaken justice for revenge and have sought punishment to ease our pain. Forgive us, God, for not seeing our own faults our own sins, and for not holding ourselves responsible for our inaction and injustice. Restore us, God, to the ways Jesus taught us, to drop our stones and instead seek forgiveness and restoration. Call us into the paths of love and reconciliation, knowing your mercy is this to all of us, your grace is a gift. And there is nothing we can do to deserve or earn it. Guide us into living into your forgiveness, peace, and reconciliation. In the name of the Prince of Peace, amen. Christ rescues us from our...